decided that it should be a method in the card class because one de good definition of a class or description of a class is that a class knows things and can do things. So knowing things relates to the attributes uh, of a class. So what does a card know? A card knows for this game set. I forgot the name of it for a second. A card knows how many, how many uh, symbols it has on it. It knows what color it is. It knows the degree of shading. And it knows a fourth thing. What shape? Shape, fill, color, and number. Right. So it knows those four things. So, gee, that's probably the four attributes that it's going to have. It might have others, but that's at least four. One of the things I decided a card should be able to do is it should be able to tell me it, it should be able to draw itself. So therefore, with that in mind, I, I decided to put the method in the card class. Now, I'm going to show you my code, and we'll spend a little bit of time talking about it. And then I'll show you the demo program that I wrote that did, that, that did a few things. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, why not put it... What would a deck draw? Which card? Okay. It makes more sense to me to put it in the card class because you can tell a card, draw yourself. If you ask, the, if you have a deck, you would have to tell the deck something like, draw such and such card. And it doesn't seem to be as clean or as, as in my mind. Do keep in mind there's, there's a number of ways that you can view a problem, but in my mind that's, that's a method on the card. All right. I realize that what I've done here sort of presupposes a couple of assumptions, mainly that the card has a get color, get fill, get shape, and get something else method. Count. Thank you. I, I always, I can never remember one of them. So what I did is, I want to look at the key parts of this. You're welcome to adapt this. And you sh I did not make it to a PDF so you couldn't cut and paste it, if that's what you were thinking. Uh, you should still be able to select and copy it. All right. But I have a method that returns a bitmap. A bitmap, as you know, is a map of bits. It's a grid of pixels or soon-to-be pixels that relate to color. All right. I'm making it a 300 by 300. I'm configuring this bitmap using this, which means that I can use the RGB color scheme and I can also set the opacity for this. So the opacity is like, is it completely solid or is it completely see-through? Um, I do that. And you could probably actually, well, never mind. So I create a bitmap. There's two classes that are important here. There's the bitmap, then there's the canvas. The canvas is the thing that you draw on. The bitmap is where what you draw on goes to. All right? So in other words, you know, conceptually, you define a bitmap. You associate that bitmap with a canvas. Then you draw something on the canvas. And what you draw on the canvas gets stored as part of the bitmap. All right. So the canvas is like the layer that you can draw on to influence what a bitmap contains. Now, drawing on a bitmap is only one of the ways that you can make a bitmap. You can make a bitmap by bringing in an image, for example. That would also be a bitmap. All right. So we're not going to bring in images. We're going to draw our image. So that's what these two things are. We have our bitmap, and then we have our canvas. And then probably have a line of redundant code, but I s associate the canvas with the bitmap. I think I did that twice by calling it in the constructor and doing it there. That's an oversight.
We also have a paintbrush. The paintbrush is going to have several qualities. Paintbrush is going to have a color associated with it. And the color coding is similar to HTML where we can specify red, green, and black. We have the other uh, dimension too that we can specify. We can specify the opacity. So is it, is it solid? Is it, is it, you know, partly shaded? Whatever. The paintbrush also has how wide the stroke is. So, for example, I only have the one pen, but if I draw a circle with a paintbrush, is it a thin stroke or is it a wide stroke? I wish I had a Sharpie or something. So I could draw circles with different size stroke set and one can be like a thin, thin line around the circle, the other can be a thick line around it. I also have the ability to either draw the outline, draw the inside, or draw the outline and color the inside. So I have three choices as far as that. In other words, do I draw, when I draw a circle, do I draw a hollow circle? Do I draw a circle that's filled in? Or do I draw the filled in part and not actually the circle going around, the border going around? Subtle difference between two of those, but um, again, you do have those choices. Each of the th four attributes of a card, I'm assuming, have a value of 0, 1, or 2. All right? So based on this get color, so I'm asking the card what color it is. If it has a value of zero, I set the red to 255 and the green and blue to zero. That means it look, it'll be a red shape that's drawn. If it's one, I set it to green. If it's two, I set it to blue. I then set the color of my paintbrush. So now my paintbrush is, is red, green, or blue, depending on what the property was. And then I set the stroke width of it to three pixels wide. I then go in and loop through this the number of times. Now, the number is also a variable that's 0, 1, or 2. All right? So that's why I go to plus 1. All right? Because if it's 0, I actually want to draw a 1. All right? I don't want to draw a 0. I, if, if the fill is zero, that means it is hollow, which means I'm going to set the paint style to stroke. That will just draw the border of the circle. If it's anything else, I'm setting the paint style to fill in stroke. So it will draw the border and it will fill it in. But if it is two, I'm setting it to be have a lower alpha level, lower opacity, so it's more see-through. If it is not two, I'm setting it to be the full, full, full force, so, so as dark as it can be. I then look at the shape. If the shape is zero, I draw a circle. If the shape is one, I draw a rectangle, and I had to cheat a little bit, but if the, if the choice is two, I draw a rounded rectangle. I, it was, I, I wasn't patient enough to draw a little squiggly or something, but you certainly could do that. Really, the only thing that matters is you have three different symbols. Now, the one little catch in this, remember, when we draw on the canvas, it gets stored in the bitmap. The canvas is sort of the, the, the thing that we draw on that the bitmap contains. If the fill is two, all right, I draw the semi-shaded circle or, or rectangle or rounded rectangle and then I draw a complete border around it with the full opacity. So we'll see this in a second. So if it's, if it, if it's set to two red circle, the circle, you'll, there'll be a dark red outline of it. The inner outline will be a faded see-through um, red underneath it. 
when I'm done, I simply return the bitmap. And then I can use that bitmap to set the image view on my UI. All right. Again, I would not consider this to be factored code. There might be a few things that you could do to make it better, but you're welcome to use this code. Here's what I did demo-wise. And I realize I didn't have that up the whole time, but you can download. If you're wa those of you that watch this um, online, you can download this example and you can see here's my loop where I repeat it as many times as there are symbols on it. Um, I set uh, the, the fill style of the paintbrush. I set the opacity. Then if it's zero, I draw a circle. If it's one, I draw a rectangle. If it's two, I draw a rounded rectangle. Finally, if it's set to be partly shaded, I draw the one that's partly shaded, then I draw the border around it fully. So I created a interface, uh, a UI with two buttons on it. And you guys can look at this if you, if you want. I have a button that says, give me three cards. So give me cards. It will, it will deal out for me three cards, and it will pop a message on the top that says whether it's a set or not. So get three cards. Might be a little hard to see. Oh, you can see it. It is a rounded rectangle, or two rounded rectangles, one circle, and two circles. And I assume you can tell their color and their opacity. The first two are hollow. The last one's partly shaded. You could if you're looking at this close. You can also set the corners, the corner radius, if you want to make it more or less rounded to make it look more or less like a circle. Um, get cards again. Tells me it's not a set. Those are, all three are rounded rectangles. Um, they're all full. The problem is, is that the first one's green and not blue. If the first one were blue, then it would be a set. Now, when I was testing this yesterday, I noticed that three random cards, there's a really low likelihood that you're going to get a set, right? So what I did is I rigged the deck in a way, which sometimes you have to do. I created a second button that will only generate sets. So I could make sure that my code to check to see if it's a set or not would work, all right? And it's a good thing I did that because my first pass, my code was wrong. To, to detect if it's a set, and it just sat there when I click Generate Set. So if I click Get Set, all right, that is a set. They all three are rounded rectangles. Um, they are different colors, different number, and different shading, all three of them. So that is a set. Get Set, same number, different shading, different shapes different colors. Okay. So you're welcome to try this out and test it. I do have the code uh, posted. Like I said, it's in a PDF, but you should be able to copy and paste this into your own code. All right. And if not, let me know and I'll give you a version. I was just having trouble posting it to Angel and keeping the formatting of it. And I looked, I saw export the PDF, so that's what I'll do. And I wasn't even thinking about about that, but you should be able to. This looks like it's a selectable PDF, so you should be able to um, copy and paste this. Key things with this, bitmap, canvas, paintbrush are your three tools that you can set in. What I like about this is it's sort of very analogous to you know, a real life thing. In real life, you know, if you're drawing with markers, for example, you would have, you know, markers that are different widths, markers that are different colors. You'd draw on a canvas. The only odd part of it is, well, then the bitmap is like where we're putting the canvas when we're done. All right. That's all I had. You can spend the rest of the time working with this in any manner that you wish. I'm going to go upstairs and get the rest of my stuff because I couldn't carry everything down at once. And then I'll be back.